Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Nice to see all of you here today. Uh, today is that time of the year where many families are taking off for vacation. And it's so important that we get that physical rest, but it's also important that we get that spiritual rest that we find with Jesus too. Uh, what's so gracious about our Savior is that he cares about both of those things, both our physical and our spiritual needs. Uh, particularly what we're going to be talking about is our rest for today. Uh, we'll begin with our opening hymn, Lift High the Cross. Uh, may God bless our worship here today. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice. For the evil I have done, and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the well-being of all people everywhere, that they may receive from you all they need to sustain body and life, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, Christ have mercy. For patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of heaven as we await your return, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord of life, live in us that we may live for you. 
Amen. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. cannot do anything that is good without you, may by your help be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson is taken from Jeremiah chapter 23, beginning with the first verse. In these verses, the Lord warns uh, the, the shepherds, the spiritual overseers of Israel, uh, for their failure to feed God's people. He promises that, that new shepherds, faithful shepherds, would come in, and ultimately, the faithful shepherd, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who would feed his people with the gospel. Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to the shepherds who tend my people. Because you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not bestowed care on them, I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done, declares the Lord. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them back to their pasture, where they will be fruitful and increase in number. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them, and they will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up to David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteousness. This is God's word. We join in our hymn response, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. <laughs> Thank you. 
peace of heaven is for all people who have their faith in Jesus. All those who have their faith in Jesus will attain its heavenly rest. A lesson from Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter 2. Therefore remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, that done in the body by the hands of men, Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one, and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace, and in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near, for through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord, and in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. This is God's word. Alleluia, alleluia. My word will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Alleluia. Please stand for the words of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Gospel according to Mark, chapter 6. Glory be to you, O Lord. This portion of Scripture will serve as the basis for our sermon meditation later on. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and the children may come forward for the children's message. Come on, come on. Have a seat. Have a seat. How are you guys this morning? I said, how are you guys this morning? Good, good. I got a question. You know, I just went on vacation. Uh, have you guys ever been on vacation? Yes. Yes. What, 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 what's something fun that happens when you go on vacation? What's something that, that's cool that you like to do when you're on vacation? Well, sometimes you get to stay home all day. <coughs> yeah, you don't have to go to school, right? You don't have to go to work and you just stay sleep. That's right. You don't have to go to work. You just get to sleep. That's my favorite part. <laughs> just getting to sleep. What else do you like to do on vacation? Flowers. flowers, picking flowers. Yeah, that's fun. What else do you do? What do you do on vacation? You never go swimming, do you? I do. Oh, you do. Okay. We went to water slides. Oh, you went on water slides. There was one at Mount, and he had some. Sometimes my daddy takes me to the pool, and I get to. Awesome. Yeah. We, we do. And you like to swim too? Yeah. I get to put my water on my head and the water. 
Cool. Very cool. Yeah, we just had vacation. We had a lot of fun, but you know what? Something bad did happen. It stormed. Some people got sick. Oh, that's kind of a bummer. So, you knew that? Yeah. That, that happened. Some people got sick earlier in first service. One of the one of the uh, one of the little kids said that they got stung by a bee when they were just on vacation. That's not fun. That's not fun either. There's no perfect vacation while we're here on earth. There's no perfect place while we're here. That's why I never right watch TV. Yeah. There's no perfect place here and now, but there is a perfect place somewhere. What's that perfect place then? Heaven. Perfect place? At the home. home in heaven. heaven. That's right. We have our home in heaven that Jesus has won for us. A place where there's no people getting sick. A place where there's no, no time to be sad. A place where we never get stunned by bees. There's a perfect place in heaven for each and every one of you. Because Jesus won even his. Because Jesus won it for you by dying on the cross and giving his life so you could have heaven. Isn't it awesome? Yeah. All right. Hold our hands and thank Jesus for the perfect vacation, the perfect rest of heaven, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you so much for dying on the cross, paying for my sins, and winning for me heaven. I look forward to being there with you forever and ever. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, good job, guys. You can go sit back down with your parents, okay? And we'll continue with our hymn of the day, In Christ Alone.
Grace, mercy, and heaven's peace be yours in abundance. Through Jesus Christ, our shepherd and king. Amen. The words for our consideration are taken from Mark's Gospel, chapter 6. Please allow me just to read one of those verses again. He said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. This is God's word. Please bow your heads for prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, many of you know that my family and I just got back from vacation. And I got to tell you, this was a special one, a very special to me. This was a, a family reunion on my side of the family. So my parents uh, and my brothers and all of their children, except for one, all made it together uh, from around the globe. I was going to show you a picture, but Stephen, can you click the PowerPoint down? You're not playing solitaire back there, are you? <laughs> there we go. So this is my family. Uh, my parents, Linda and Rachel, they live out in uh, Southern California. Uh, my brother Dan, he's a pastor in, in just outside San Diego. His wife, Linka, his oldest couldn't be there, but then uh, Kyla and Josh and Annika and Levi. Uh, my brother Steve, he's a Black Hawk pilot down in Alabama. And his wife, Sarah, they're three girls. Lena, Sophia, and Veronica. My brother Mike, his wife Monica. Mike's a pastor in Southern California too. My daughter Kiera, and then the six-week-old twins, Elias and Alethea. Uh, and then, of course, that handsome fellow right there. Uh, Alyssa, Lydia, and Eli turning away from the camera, and Maya. And then uh, my little brother Andrew, he's a pastor in Michigan. His wife Christina, uh, their oldest Allie, Kaylin, Seth, and then Christina's pregnant with number four. So uh, 28 people, 28 and a half if you count Christina's <laughs> belly, all made it for the family reunion. And it was, it was so much fun. So much fun being able to get together with, with my brothers. We, we pick up like we never, you know, like, like you never went away from each other. We're playing cards and we're laughing, having a good time. Uh, the kids, as you can see, probably had a blast. Yes, they did. They, they, it was just complete controlled chaos the entire time while we were there. But we had so much fun swimming and playing and uh, just, just a great time. Um, who doesn't love vacation? I mean, maybe on your vacations you like to go and see family or visit some friends. Maybe on your vacations you like to... Uh, I don't know, go see something you've never seen before, go do something that you've never quite experienced. Vacations are great. We get a chance to sleep in, as Gabriella told us here uh, during the children's message. You get to sleep, you get to cheat on your diet, uh, you, you get to just kind of let loose and veg out for a, a few days, right? It's good to do that every once in a while. We need to do that every once in a while. What's so encouraging is we find out that it's Christ-like to do so. It's Christ-like for us to get some physical rest. It's essential for us to do that. We see him urging the disciples to do that in our lesson for today, taken from Mark's Gospel. Uh, what had happened earlier in chapter 6, Jesus had sent out the twelve two by two in some of the surrounding towns and villages. And he said, I want you to go out and preach and teach, cast out demons, I want you to heal the sick. This was their chance to take what they'd learned in the classroom with Rabbi Jesus out into the streets. This was their chance to, to really bite their, sink their teeth into the public ministry, get a, a sense of what it was really all about. Well, now after they've done that, we find them coming back to Capernaum, Peter's hometown, and meeting once again with Jesus. And there, Mark tells us, they reported to him all that they had done and taught. Now you can imagine their excitement. I, I, I still can remember what it was like coming back to the seminary after vicar year 
Everybody had their Vicar Year stories. And after about two weeks, everybody was done listening to everybody else's Vicar Year stories. You don't want to hear them anymore. But you're telling all of these wonderful things that happened. Jesus, you should have seen us. John and I, we were in Cana, and, and, and there was this, this demon-possessed man. And he came up to me and he said, Who are you? And I said, I'm Peter, a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now get out of that man. It worked. It's awesome. Jesus, oh, you should have heard James preach when we were in Jericho. I looked out and I saw this huge crowd of hundreds of people with tears in their eyes, weeping over their joy of the gospel. Weeping because they knew that they had forgiveness with God. But like many first tastes of the ministry, I'm sure they weren't all great experiences too. Remember Jesus had told them that they were going to face some rejection. I'm sure some of them said, Lord, it wasn't easy when we were in Shiloh. Every door that was open got slammed back in our face. And so we did what you told us to do. We shook the dust off our sandals and we left. They rejected your message. All of this preaching, all of this teaching, all of these miracles, as you can imagine, gathered all sorts of attention. And so when they come back to Capernaum and they, they meet up, maybe at Peter's house, Peter's mother's house, they find that the crowds had grown so large, so many people kept coming in and coming in that the disciples, Mark tells us, didn't even have a chance to eat. Every dad wanted his daughter healed. Every woman wanted her leprosy gone. Everybody was starving to hear this news of salvation. And the disciples just kept working through it. Kept preaching, kept teaching, kept healing kept telling the news of salvation. Who here thinks that would be awesome to have something like that? All of a sudden, our church doors got flooded with people begging, Pastor, could I please sign up for your Bible information class? Pastor, would you mind us going through a devotion? Pastor, we would love to hear some guidance from God's Word. Wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that be great if every hour of my day was filled up with people starving for the word of truth. Who here thinks that would be great? I sure do. It'd be awesome, it'd be great, but it would be physically impossible. Right? How it was for Jesus, and the, that's how it was for the disciples, and Jesus recognized that. They were just men. They had been faithfully preaching, faithfully teaching God's word, but now they were white. They hadn't gotten a wink of sleep, their stomachs were growling, and Jesus says to them, listen to the care that he shows for them. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. You can picture Jesus putting his arm around Peter and saying, you know what? The work is never done. There's always going to be ministry to do. There's always going to be someone who needs to hear this wonderful truth. There's always going to be someone who needs our help. But you guys can't. You're not up for the challenge physically. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Let's just take a break. We'll recharge our batteries. And we'll come back at it in a few days. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Those words of Jesus this morning give us some, some great guidance on God's gift of physical rest. You know, life isn't an endless carnival cruise. You know that as well as I do. We aren't meant just to coast through life. Um, we've been given a set of talents and skills that God tells us to put to work. When we don't, we call that being Lazy. Lazy. Paul had to address that with the Thessalonian congregation. Here's what he said to them. We were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day, laboring and toiling 
so that we would not be a burden to any of you. We did this not because we do not have the right to such help, but in order to make ourselves a model for you to follow. For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. And you can use this the next time on your voice. If a man will not work, he will not eat. So the next time your father tells you to do something, do your chores. Remember what Paul says. God created us to serve. Serve him and serve one another, not just serve ourselves. But on the other hand, we're not meant to just work our lives away. That, that isn't admirable. That's foolish. Anybody remember who Lee Iacocca is? Who's Lee Iacocca? Head of Chrysler back in the day. Lee Iacocca, very smart guy. He, he wrote a, a little bit on, on people's misunderstanding about rest and being a successful businessman. This is what he said one time. I'm constantly amazed by the number of people who can't seem to control their own schedules. Over the years, I've had many executives come to me and say with pride, boy, last, last year I worked so hard that I didn't take any vacation. It's actually nothing to be proud of. I always feel like responding, you dummy, you mean to tell me that you can take responsibility for an $80 million project? but you can't plan two weeks out of the year to go off with your family and have some fun? Jesus puts it this way. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Taking rest isn't a luxury, it's essential. Going on vacation isn't selfish, it's Christ-like. Our sinful bodies wear and tear, and we need time to mend. We need time to recharge our batteries. The disciples, that they could barely keep their eyes open and their, their stomachs were growling. They were weak. Jesus says, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. That's all they needed. It was a good hot meal and some shut-eye chance to recharge. But as disciples of Jesus, we see that we, we rest and we relax only to tire and tucker ourselves out all over again because the ministry is never done. The disciples found that the hard way. By the way, thank you for uh, not coming up to Ohio to see me on my vacation. I appreciate that and chasing me down. Uh, our lesson tells us many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. Jesus packs all the, the, the disciples into a boat. They take off. But when they do, the people start running along the seashore. And the people of Capernaum leave and they, they pick up a few more people along the way. And they pick up a few more people. And, and, and like a snowball rolling down a mountaintop, they end up meeting Jesus and the twelve when they get to the other side of the lake. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Ministry's never done, is it? Jesus peered into their souls and he saw how helpless and wanting they really were. These people were like sheep without a shepherd. No one had been feeding them. No one had led them to the green pastures of God's word. No one had offered them the living water of salvation. They were starving. They were scared. They were so high strung. But no vacation destination in the world was going to give them the R&R &R that they needed. They needed something not from this world. Not from this world of sin. They needed to hear the one who spoke with the authority of God Most High. These people recognized that Jesus had something 
that no Mediterranean cruise, no weekend stay at the Dead Sea Spa and Resort could cure. Jesus had peace. The peace with our Almighty Heavenly Father. Jesus brought with him the forgiveness of sins. Jesus brought with him aid to their, their sin-sick souls. Jesus brought to them the promise of paradise. Those are gifts for which he suffered and died. Those are the gifts for which he shed his blood. And those are the gifts for which he rose again and brings to each and every one of you. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. When we come to Jesus, we know that it's much more than a physical rest. It's a rest for our souls. Because each and every single week we go through the trials and temptations of sin. Each and every single week we get stuck in the thorns and the thistles of temptation. Each and every week we get stung and scarred by sin. We have these feelings of, of guilt for our, our mismanagement of our time. Feelings of guilt for not using the talents that God has given to us but being lazy with them. Feelings of guilt for being workaholics and neglecting our wives and our children. All these guilty feelings that we carry around in our heart, but our Savior says to us this morning, those are sins for which he died too. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Those are sins for which Jesus battled the agony of the cross and the pains of hell to bring you peace. I don't know what sin you're struggling with or what problem is plaguing your heart right now. But rest assured, Jesus died for that sin. Rest assured, your record is clean. He's paid for it in full. With our hearts recharged with God's means of grace, his word and sacrament, we look out and get ready to work in the field once again. Because the work of preaching the gospel is never done. There's always people that need it. But as we do, may we follow the example of our Savior. Take time for ourselves. Take time for our families. Recharge, regroup, and get out there and give God our best. To him be the glory, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 10 in our service folder. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, the ushers will be handing out our friendship registers. We ask that you please fill those out to mark your visit here with us today. Um, also, those of you who are joining us online, please be sure to sign our online guest book. After that, we have the opportunity to bring our offerings of thanks to the Lord.
please stand for prayer. Almighty God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. All the stars, the sun and the moon, all energies and forces, the sea and clouds are messengers of your wonder and might. For your creation and our enjoyment of it, we praise you, O Heavenly Father. We pray for your church and for your people. Grant us faithful shepherds who are led by your spirit and earnestly hold forth your word of life. Save us from all false prophets and deceitful teachings that we may with one mind strive for the truth of your word. Guard and defend our homes that parents may be kept in the bonds of love and rule their children well, nourishing them in truth and righteousness. Continue to watch over and bless the efforts of our workforce, our efforts in education and science, professions and the arts, that in their advancement your people may prosper. We pray for all who may be ill in body, mind, or spirit, for all who may be in danger, for all who may be in anxiety, for all who are suffering disappointment or defeat. Be present with them in their afflictions. Show them the way out of their troubles, and show them the light of heaven, the rest that you promise. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you also our private petitions and silent prayer. spare your own son, but freely gave him up for us all. Mercifully grant these and all other acceptable petitions that you read in our hearts in the name of Jesus, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Continue with the preface found at the top of page 12 in our worship folder. Oh, may the good Lord be with you. And may the Lord be with you too. Let us praise him. Alleluia. With hearts uplifted, thank the Lord. We lift them up, be God adored. Let us praise him. Alleluia. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who has called us to be his own so that we may live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness innocence and blessedness therefore with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven we praise your holy name and join their glorious song
Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. <laughs> May be seated and come forward at the direction of our ushers. Take and eat. This is the body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given to you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the blood of our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May this body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith until life everlasting. Go knowing your sins are forgiven. Amen. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given to you for the forgiveness of all our sins. The true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed on the cross for you, for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen.
the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given and death for you, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given into death for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take a drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed on the cross for you for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Go in peace and enjoy. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Please stand for prayer. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you have given us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn. Again, so nice to see all of you here today. Um, I don't have any special announcements. Uh, ones that you uh, can read are right in your announcement sheet. So I wish you God's blessings on your week. And uh, we will uh, see you next week, if not before. Thank you.